Hi, welcome to the channel, Budget Audio Review and Upgrades. Today is a continuation of my CD and DVD player reviews, just in the sound part on the DVD players. Obviously the CD players is sound only anyway, just to do a comparison, try and pick out some good ones for some, maybe not so good ones, I won't call them bad ones, but maybe not so good ones. This is a Sony DVP725D, S725D DVD player. And it looks a bit like a CD player, doesn't it? This is not quite the run-of-the-mill kind of DVD player looks you get. Uh, so this looks a bit more like a CD player. Right, on eBay at the moment, these go anywhere between 10 uh, and £21. Obviously, they go dearer than that. Buy it now, it's 50 quid, 60 quid. But that's what they've sold for in the past. 10 without the remote, £21 with the remote. I didn't get a remote with this one. Uh, but like I say, you, 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 I think you'll definitely get one for £40. Let's put it that way with a remote. But... Just shop about, hang about, bid up, all that kind of stuff. Another little tip I mentioned in the previous video is also is when someone's got a Sony DVD player or any make DVD player sometimes, they don't always put the model number down because they think it's such a run-of-the-mill, cheap thing, throwaway thing that hardly anyone wants. They may do bid up or buy it now, probably bid up, and they don't put a model number. People think, oh, it's just another DVD player, and skip past it. But if you go to the ad, go in the ad and have a look what model number it is. Uh, you may be surprised, you may be able to get something very cheap indeed, but it's quite good. Okay, usual thing, we're going to have a look at the back first. Well, let's have a look at the front, you can't really see the front. Let's have a little look at the front. Hopefully that's a bit clearer, obviously you can go on the internet and type the number in and have a proper look at the front. There's the back of the rear. Tons and tons of sockets there. We're only interested in the audio out and we're only interested in the analogue audio out through the RCA Phono sockets. It's got a digital output as well as a coax output as well. You can obviously link up to DAX, all that kind of stuff. We're not interested in that. This is a budget channel. You can be looking for a budget player. And if you want to add a DAC and all that to improve the sound even further, that's up to you. But obviously, it's going to cost you more money on top. Okay, normal thing now. Let's have a little look inside. And as you can see, I'm taking a very different, different amounts of pictures here. I don't go into which, you know, digital analog converter it's got inside. Nothing like that. What bit rate, all that stuff. I'm not interested. All I want to know is how does it sound and as you can see it's got quite a lot of stuff packed into this box so this would have been a reasonably expensive or quite expensive unit at the time i would have thought because a lot of gubbins and lots of goings on inside and some good quality stuff in there by the looks of it as well okay going to do my normal test now where i put a cd in and we're going to see how fast it is let's just go look at the front here very quickly you've got your headphone socket you've got a volume control there for your headphone socket you've got everything you need here to skip tracks forward fast, all that kind of thing, rewind, etc. Uh, if you want to do that without the remote, if you haven't got the remote. Just one thing to be careful with these DVD players as well, you may have to go into the menu to turn off any surround or any effects. So just bear that in mind. You may actually have to link this up to the TV first of all to turn any of them off. And it's got a little surround button here, virtual surround, and it's on the front of this one. So we can turn it on and off at the front. Obviously you've got it in the off position for all the uh, tests and recall, uh, not recordings, but all the tests, all the listening, etc. Uh, I'll come to a cut one of these little um, buttons or uh, controls in a minute. But anyway, let's just eject it. Normal thing. I'm putting the same CDs in all the time for these. So there's my first CD. So we're going to close that and see how fast it is to read the disc. And there you go. So what we're going to do, we're going to play it. And we're going to skip one track like I do with the other. So let's just find exactly where it is on here. Uh, I said you can do it, and I've seems to have lost the control. Is it this one here? No, it isn't. Oh, I'll tell you what it is on here. It's just the thing I wanted to talk to about as it happens. It was the uh, little jog thing. It's a jog wheel on here. So we just want to skip one track. So I want to do it now. And we're going to do it now. And that's a little jog wheel. Uh, so you can go back, just turn it, cut it one notch there. But you can actually, like, say you want to skip five tracks, just whiz it through. And let's skip five tracks there without pressing boom, boom, boom five times or direct input. You can just do this. So if we go a couple more forward, and if, we, if I go back as well, that'll give you an idea. Little jog control. I quite like that. I quite like that little feature, uh, that little jog wheel. So that's that there. So I'm going to eject that now. And we're going to take that out. This is a, this is a CDR now. I'm going to stuff that in there. Same thing again, I don't know why I use both, just in case it's a bit quicker reading one disc to the other CDR versus a normal press disc. So um, it's just uh, this. Ah, <laughs> I just realised, <laughs> live on air. 
Okay, it doesn't play CDRs, this thing. It doesn't play CDRs. It's a little bit of a negative. Though I did review, I did read, sorry, on a few reviews that people said it did read CDRs if they were a dark coloured CDR. I haven't got a couple of dark coloured ones. In fact, one of them's black uh, CDR, like mimicking the old PlayStation 1 games kind of thing. And it never read any of the CDRs I did. Uh, even though I went down to, I think, eight times speed on recording. So it didn't play any CDRs. So you may be lucky. Some people did report it. It does, but they're few and far between. So I think we're taking that this player does not play CDRs. So I can't obviously show you that. So okay, now let's get on to how it actually sounded. So how did this player actually sound? Well, I thought this was an excellent sounding machine. I really did. This is far the best player in them six that I'm doing this little review, this little test about. It, it just toppled the denim player there. It was just another step above that denim player. So for what you're going to pay for it, 20, 30, maybe 40 pounds, you're getting a blinding little player here, like a really budget player, but a blinding little player. Drawback, it doesn't play CDRs if you're really fussed about that. And I'm not really that fussed about it because all my collection really is original discs and that's what I'm playing. Okay, where to start? I'll start at the top end. The top end was nice. It was detailed, very detailed. Never going mushy. It was just so detailed, clear, precise. It never went beyond where it should do. A couple of these players, or a few of these players, just went a bit too high and it sounded like, like I say, it's going mushy and it's just, it sounded a bit issy, if you know, kind of that kind of thing. It was leading to the kind of that. This was rock solid. This was nice, the top end. The male vocals were nice. Nice and controlled. The top end was nice and controlled. The male vocals were controlled. Focus, the top end there again, going back to the top end. The male vocals was quite nice. There's nice sounding. I just felt the female vocals just sounded a little bit on the raw side, just a little bit raw, just a little bit edgy, but only a little bit, and not stepping over the line. You know, if you had to put a line and say it's going too far, this wasn't. This was making a live kind of a performance. Live, use their kind of performance. Really, really nice. It's a nice transparent sound. Nice sound stage, nice open. Instrument placing was really, really good. Focus was fantastic. It was really, really good to focus on here. Really, really trumpet. Sax, sounding natural, enjoyable, nicely focused, instrument placement again, like I'm just reading there, very nice, very, very good, nice engaging sound here, piano sounded real realistic, nice, keys it in the strings, that sounded really, really nice, the piano, it was like I say, a nice engaging, just really, really nice player, it was alive, very, very alive, got you into it, the old drumsticks come out, them chopsticks are about, even though they're not here, they're in the drawer, been told not to touch them by the missus. I don't think she's too happy with me mucking about with her chopsticks, but they sound really nice, this did. Well, they didn't sound the nice the chopsticks, the player did. And I was out tapping my leg, even though the leg's playing me up at the moment, tapping my leg, the old drumsticks out, or the old chopsticks out, getting away and getting involved with this and really, really enjoying myself. So the stage just kept cranking the amplifier up just a little bit more, just a little bit more. And I thought, well, I'm going to have to stop because I'm never going to get any of these reviews up and taped. But yeah, this is a really, really nice player. So what I would say is, if you're thinking about getting maybe a DVD player as your CD player, this is one definitely to look out for. If you're thinking about getting this, when I, I'll say get it, don't, you know, definitely don't, I ain't going to put you off of it at all. Just get it. The only drawback maybe, it don't play CDRs. But then again, don't pay a fortune because like maybe me, not so much me maybe, but other people on YouTube start recommending stuff, some big players out there, some big names that do this iFi audio kind of stuff. They recommend stuff. Don't mean you've got to go out there and start paying top money for it and over the odds for it. They're recommending it at a realistic price because obviously if you go too far, you're going to get into other categories where you could buy something better. So because they say, and I say maybe, that this is a good player, stick within your boundary, stick within that boundary of that price bracket, because then, like I say, you're venturing into another price bracket when this probably ain't gonna be such a great player if you're paying 500 pounds for it. I know I'm getting a bit carried away with a price bracket there, but I'm just kind of giving you, for instance, you know I mean, there is a limit, you know I mean, to where you wanna pay. And I think if you pick this up for 40 pounds, something, maybe 50, well, say 40 or 50 pounds tops, maybe, with the remote and that, you're gonna really like this. You're gonna be very pleased with this indeed, I think. And apparently the video is very good on this as well, just in case you wanted to use it as a DVD player, which I doubt many people are going to do because they want HDMI and they're probably into Blu-ray by now as well. So that's it really. So if you see one of these, charity shop, etc., eBay, somewhere like that, nice and cheap, well, don't think twice about it. I definitely recommend it. Okay, to the next one. I'll see you all soon and I'll say thanks for watching. Bye for now.